Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. VOD reviews and coaching is really fun content to make on Overwatch. There's a lot of really good advice that goes amiss and it's something that I personally have a lot of interest in. However, on Overwatch Central, I feel that we fall behind sometimes in the advice that we can give in comparison to somebody like Jane. I mean, obviously. So I wanted to sort of combine the VOD review series that we have done in the past with the Master Guide. So with each of these videos, so for example, we have a Gold Anna that we'll be reviewing today and in each of these videos, we will have a special guest helping us VOD review them. Today, we will have the top 500 and pro player Dyer who plays for We Have Org for EU Contenders looking over this footage with me and giving some solid advice. The idea is to have pro players, top 500s and also streamers that are really good at their heroes to come on as special guests for each episode. If you want your VOD reviewing then all of the details are in the description below. Please on the YouTube links and the better quality the gameplay the more likely you will be submitted. But if you do like this idea and you want to see more do like this video and comment below. Sorry about the long introduction it took a lot of explaining to do. Because this is effectively a new series so we're going to go straight into it you can check out all of Dyer's stuff in the description below and we'll be going over this gold and a VOD. So let's get started. So what do you think of this team comp? I know the tab is going pretty crazy, but I think we have a Mercy, Brigitte, Widowmaker, Hanzo, and Winston. I, I was going to say, like, how does what other supports get played affect how you would play Anna? Um, when, I, when I'm when i playing Anna, I prefer to have a Lucio, ideally. Zen is, like, the second best option, but Lucio is, like, the best option by far, because speed boost and amp are up, and amp heals are the best way to peel for Anna if, like, someone's on her. And also, nades can... If you combine your bio nades with amp up from heals, you basically can't die. It's almost impossible. Like, the healing... The base healing's stronger than Mercy or Zen by far, which just makes Lucio the most effective peeler for Anna. Mercy's okay, but then you're rolling into the problem of having no defensible, no beat, no transcendence, which can really pose a problem depending on the enemy team comp. Against some enemy team comps, it's fine, but I think it's generally kind of risky. It's not my preferred option. So everything that we've seen so far, are you spotting anything? Is this looking all sort of expected? Because really, this isn't up to you to try and poke in, this is up to the tanks, but what, could, what more can be done, I suppose? Like, just sort of... What are you thinking when you're watching this? I mean, they have a Diva Zarya, and so they have to um, sort of wait for an opportunity to throw a, a anti nade. I think anti nade is what they're looking for here because if they get a good anti nade, they can just dive because they have stat. They have two static characters. They have Brigitte and Zarya, which are very good bio nade targets. But you have to be patient and wait for the Zarya's projected and ally bubble to get the most value from it. I was just going to ask, what is kind of going wrong here? Because this fight was easily lost. Um... I think standing in that choke as Anna is not what you want to be doing. I think that's just leaving yourself very exposed. You should be standing farther back because Anna is a sniper character and she has basically infinite range with her right click. It, and since it's a hit scan as well, it means you can instantly heal people while being very far away from them, which makes you very safe in most situations. So you should be um, should be standing this far forward. and. You, as, as I can see there, there's a lack of... I think there's just a real lack of discipline from what I'm seeing right now. Like, not waiting for the enemy cooldowns before going for nades. And, like, a general, like, lack of understanding of when someone is best to save that. For example, they tried to sleep the Doomfist while they had ult. And generally with Doomfist, you want to save your your sleep dart until they use this their slam ability the e ability because his movement is completely locked in that ability all he can do is turn his direction he's facing but other than that he can't move which makes him very predictable to sleep dart once you have it down he's also very easy to sleep out of his meteor strike but you need help like a lucio speed boost to survive it because it's very unlikely you can survive a meteor strike without any help this looks really disconnected i think is the sort of main thing but it, like the main problem isn't necessarily the anna here right it's the whole of the team not really pushing in at all, so you see Niana having to push up quite far up. It's almost like a forced play, a little bit of tilt, perhaps. Yeah, I... not necessarily that they're angry, but like, come on, we need to get going. So Niana's stood really far forward, and that's where she's, you know, susceptible to being doomfisted in a case. Yeah, it feels there's not there's not any communication going on in the team, so it's kind of difficult to really know what the team's doing. And if you, I, 
And support players can often fall into a trap in solo queue where they feel like they have to make stuff happen because no one else is, which results in them possessioning very aggressively. I guess one of the main questions here is because you said like being at a distance away from your team, healing from a distance because that's what Anna's really good at. How do you do that and also not get isolated by a Doomfist, which is exactly what's happening? Like, this Anna's not doing any healing because she's too busy trying to deal with the Doomfist. Luckily, the rest of the team's alive, but how do you, you know, keep effective range so you're not on the point using your sniper ability without almost leaving yourself on an island that if the Doomfist jumps on you, nobody can help you? I think... I think some in I think some interesting positions against Doomfist you could take, specifically on Hollywood first, is that... If you play on the stairs, it means that the Doomfist has to basically, like, move in a straight line towards you since he can't do a rollout onto you from the sky since there's no sky above you. If you stand there, it basically forces the Doomfist to go in a very predictable way. He's either... he's gonna... What he probably will try to do is rocket punch towards you or just, like, get close out of your line of sight and slam you unexpectedly and both movements of and both are very easy to predict and also on top of the stairs even if you even if you're on the stairs correctly even if you get punched you won't hit the back of a wall because those stairs are pretty long so and that gives you an opportunity to sleep in as well but communication is a real key part here you need to communicate with your team try and get a zarya bubble if he jumps on you and even if you do hit a sleep on him, your team needs to know about it in order to help you. And there's no communication in this team right now. No one's using the mic. Uh, so generally, you think Niana is standing too close to a team. I guess this is a perfect example of why not to be stood really close to your team because you're just going to get grabbed by yeah. dragon. Like, and that also a, goes back to the team comp thing. Like, what else are you sort of spotting from what we've seen so far? Because this seems like one of those games that I think a lot of people typically have. It's not as if this Anna's playing particularly bad. It just feels like the actual impact that they're having on the game isn't really there. So how can you maximize your effectiveness as an Anna? Other than, you know, standing back a little bit and making use out the fact that you're a long-range healer. Uh, I think... I think what I'd like to see is more scope shots and quick scopes, like the mechanical things. They are very important with Anna. He's calling it there. I did see that he did say to his team that he did sleep, but... I guess the problem with this team comp as well is you don't really have the burst to take a diva out of mech instantly, right? I think the Widowmaker took a shot, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, and also the the enemy team was quite close by, so they're gonna all come to help the diva who's sleeping. I think I see this Anna barely take any scope shots at all, and I think that's a real problem because Anna's scope shots are way easier to use than her unscoped. Her projectile is really like weird because you can you can barely see a projectile shot and it's a very quick one as well and it's it makes because you can barely see the projectile you're shooting it's very hard to get a sense of where it might go and the hit scan shots from a right click are way better and way more consistent and easier to land so i i feel like when it comes to something like anna where you position yourself is really important like you almost have preemptive places in mind like if you're on this part of the map you'd be stood somewhere else for example what general rules of thumb will Anna positioning come down to like a certain amount of distance I suppose because this this is just too close if the Zarya has another grav here you're in overtime if you die in a situation you're out the ideal position for an Anna is um being far away to where their front line can't just trample you like you don't want to stand close enough to your tanks that the enemy Zarya can just walk up to you and laser beam you and you don't want to be too far away that no one can help you if someone like tries to flank you. So basically, it's somewhere in the middle of being close to your team and not being too far away, because that will let your team peel for you more effectively. And um... I've heard like the L-shape theory too of being able to see your team, but the enemy team can't see you. So you're using cover and you're looking at your team, but the enemy team can't see you because of cover, right? So say, for example, like on the point you're shooting where the Mercy and the Widowmaker are and healing across like that, but the enemy team can't see you. So you want to position yourself in situations like the Anna's in right now, right? So you can see your team, but the enemy can't really get to you. Is that like a good practice to have? I think um, I think playing around corners and sight lines is a, is a very good practice because it'll keep you safe from being sniped while trying to heal people. 
I think when this becomes most important is when you play against snipers. So when you play against snipers, the sight lines are very important. And generally you want to play close to the walls and the corners. So you can help your team while staying safe from snipers. What could have been done better there? Because that was just a... I guess the only way to describe that was like Anna got overwhelmed. She had the doom fist on her. There was a hands are taking pot shots. I think that... And again already, like I think Dins has been a bit aggressive here. Yeah, like... he's going for the flanks. And this can work out and... It, it can work out, but you need to, like, you need to have insane, you have to have really strong mechanics to make a flank like that work. Or you need to do it when they're all grouped up. Like, the only times I personally flank is to, like, get a position to anti-nade my, my team's grav. And, um, I think it just came down to positioning again. Like, the Hanzo had a free, had three shots on her from the high ground. The Doomfist was able, easily able to reach her, and I think if they had just stayed like out of the choke point there, where the Hanzo can't see them, and it would make the Doomfist's job a bit more difficult since they have to reach them, I think they would have lived for longer. I think one of the most important things to support is just surviving for as long as possible. You never want to be the first one to die in a team fight, that's basically a loss fight. Okay, so the defense, uh, Dins actually ended up winning this game, but it was a full hold. So I don't really want to look at the defense, but I think there was certainly a lot of uh, stuff on this attack that we can definitely look at and improve that we missed the first time around. So we're just going to take brief glimpses of certain plays that really catches uh, Dyer's attention and what could be done better or what was good and should be, you know, reinforced a little bit more. What they're doing right now at the start is what I want to see more of. I want to see more scope shots. I want to see more quick scopes because they make playing Anna so much easier. How much of Anna is down to mechanical skill, would you say? Like, can you play her and not have the best aim in the world? Because people are gold and below or just a little bit above. Let's take ML7 for the example. ML7... ML7's strength isn't his aim, like what most people might think. It's just that he's insanely smart with Anna. He knows what he's doing. He's an insanely smart player. And I feel like that means that I'd say mechanics are about like, I'd say about half of Anna. Cause obviously ML7's aim is good. Like there's no denying that. I'm not saying his aim is bad, but his strong point isn't his aim is my point. It's just the fact he has very good game sense and awareness and positioning, which I think combines are way more important than, um, than aim, but you need to have a degree of mechanical skill to like really make the most out of Anna. So I'd say it's about, I, I'm going to say it's about 40 to 60 for aim and game sense. So is this just too close to be standing as Anna, like right on the corner? And here... they're, stand, they're playing the corner there and I like it. It's just too close, I think is the problem. And then the Doomfist could just isolate you, yeah. Yeah. I think some communication would go a very long way as well. Like you need, to, when you're playing support at a high level, you need to call things like, you need to call when you're being flanked so your team can help you. And if you don't, then your team won't have any clue what's going on. This is the right distance, right? Would you say for Anna? Sorry to interrupt, but like this seems like a really... Yeah, this is fine. This is, where they're standing now is okay. If they play around this corner, their Hanzo can't kill them. So that, that'd be a pretty good position because They'd be close enough to efficiently help their team and try and look for needs and sleeps while not putting themselves at too much risk. In that situation, do you want to be healing the Hanzo or killing the Doomfist? Uh, well, the nade is a good idea, and with Hanzo's burst damage, I mean, the Doomfist was whiffing a lot of shots there, so I think if the Anna hit her shots, they would have killed the Doomfist and the Hanzo would have survived. When it comes to like the sleep darts or the grenades, what are you sort of seeing and liking or disliking? They don't seem to understand when when characters are at their most vulnerable. So, for example, Brig, if Brig misses a bash, that's when she's at her most vulnerable because she can get slept naders and that's when she can start dying quicker. And same thing with Doomfist. When he's like locked in his slam animation, that's when he's at his weakest. How would you go about sort of positioning them? Because it's it's Hollywood point two, right? Like there's a lot of high ground that it's a very difficult point to survive. It basically your team needs a comp that can take control of high grounds and that can dive high ground to create space against this comp. I, with the comp they're playing, the Anna's team, they're at the mercy of the other team because they all can jump down from the high grounds and get an angle on the Anna. 
And they just seem to exploit it, like hands us up on the high ground on the jail, for example. Doomfist can easily go from top to bottom. Um, you have a diva around us too. And the whole composition that this team is running is so against vertical mobility, the Reaper, the Zarya, the May, it's all close quarters, so Yeah, it's why it's why they struggled so much on this point. It's just because they have no vertical mobility to take control of high ground, which makes Anna's life pretty hell on this point at, on that point. It basically means that your positioning won't matter too much because you'll always be easily accessible. I guess the only thing you can do in this situation is just stay with your team and a ball because if you stand too far away, you'll just get isolated. What you want to, in an ideal situation, you'd want your team to just peel for you super hard if you're playing like a close quarters composition. I guess that's, you know, we sort of said before, like you want to have some effective range as Anna, but because of the comp that they're running and the comp that uh, Diana's team is running, it's very difficult to do that. So. I guess the question I'm asking is, how much does team comp have to do with that kind of area? And what, like, say, for example, you're playing GOATS or you're playing DIVE, how will that dictate your Anna playstyle, I suppose? When you're playing DIVE, the only help you're going to get from your team is from your second support. So you really want to just play around your Lucio a lot and make sure, make sure you're communicating with him and make sure he knows where you are and make sure he can help you as well. And if he's not helping you, you need to just ask for help from the Lucio if he's not doing it. And when you're playing like something like Goats, for example, you mainly play as a group, but you may but you don't want to play too close to the front line, as I've said, but you want to play close enough to them that they can turn around if someone tries to flank you. So we've pretty much finished this for the second time now. A couple more things to add on. What can this Anna do to improve? Like for the next games or so? I think practice their mechanics, like scoping in quick quick scoping i think if they do that they'll have way more effectiveness and hit more shots which will which will make them more useful and um mainly just try and practice being disciplined with their abilities and not just throwing it out waiting for enemy cooldowns like zarya bubble waiting for defense matrix waiting for certain doomfist abilities in order to sleep them and also looking for opportunities for anti-nades i didn't really see many big anti-nades and I feel like at this rank, people play in groups a lot, so it could be easier to get a big anti-nade. But like with Sleep Dart, you need to show discipline with that ability. Can't ever play the same. You can't play the same way on every map with Anna, just because you, some maps lend themselves to certain playstyles better. And Hollywood's second point is not a map where you want to play sort of ultra aggressive on, and it's mainly a map where you want to survive for as long as possible because if they're playing a dive comp from the high ground you need to survive for as long as possible it's not always possible that you can stay alive the whole time but what's important is that you do stay alive just for lo long enough to have an impact um i just wanted to say just towards the end of it uh thank you very much for your help going through this dire uh hopefully this anna has learned quite a lot but if people are wanting to learn more from anna as a whole, where can they find more from you? Well, I'm on Twitch and I stream most weekdays at uh, DioW and um, I also upload videos to my YouTube which you can find by just putting the link youtube.com at uh, slash DioW. I, I have an example of VOD reviews I've done for people in the past and with the season ending soon, I'm going to be doing VOD reviews on stream, so I'll be looking for people to uh, submit a VOD so that I can go over in great length and detail, like this one, for example. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. You can check out all of Dyer's stuff in the description below. And also, if you want to submit your own gameplay for a future series like this, then do follow the instructions also in the description. If you want to see more content like this, then I do implore you to like and comment below that you want to see more. And the more people that do that, the more likely we are to continue this series. It was really fun to do. I really want to do more, but we'll see what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon.